today I'm going to talk about spinning worsted weight yarn and fatter. So a couple of ways to work out uh, how thick you want it to be. First you can simply google and it will tell you that your end result will want to be in the region of 10 wraps per inch for a worsted weight. Um, so that gives me a good starting point. I have this yarn here which was marketed as a worsted weight. If I put that on the 10 then yeah that looks pretty good however I'm not going to be measuring it loose under tension, um, not under tension like this as I'm spinning because uh, my yarn will all kink up back on itself. So stretched somewhere 12 to 14 wraps per inch that then smushes up to 10 unstretched. So uh, that gives me a basis for uh, knowing where to start. So I've uh, got my control card here, uh, so I'm just going to keep that next to me. I'll be keep checking on it. Let's see if I can get out far enough. Right, so that'll be here. I'll be checking it as I'm spinning. Uh, this yarn I will put out of the way, I don't need that. This is what I'm going to be spinning. It's a uh, bat that coordinates the one with the ones I've been making art yarns with, but this one is just wool and silk. It, uh, doesn't have any of the lumpy bits in, so it should give me a fairly nice smooth spin. And also a cat visitor habit. So uh, I will tear a moderately thin strip of it. Okay, there we go. If I put this down on the other side of the table, then maybe she will get out of the way. Come sit on that. And we go. Right, I have my. Uh, Spinner set up how I had it the other day, so uh, I would last spinning art yarn. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to put the orifice reduce back in and back the tension off a bit because I know for this yarn I don't need it that uh, that high a take up. May have to fiddle a little bit more with tension, but it shouldn't be too bad. Now, I know I want my final yarn to be about 10 wraps per inch, so I've decided I want to do a chain ply for my singles, so I use up all of them, don't have to worry about dealing with little bits of leftovers. For a three ply or a chain ply, your singles wraps per inch wants to be double your desired final wraps per inch, so that's about between 10 and 14, doubled 20 to 28. Uh, uh, around the side of thinner because it will smush up quite a lot so I want it somewhere around this line here that's 24 no finer than the one that's 30 and I will be spinning Z my speed I'll start off fairly low it's uh, it's not a particularly fine yarn so I don't want too much twist Although I've decided I want a nice tight ply twist, so I get a nice smushy yarn. So uh, I'll adjust as I go along. So that's on the fine side. That's coming up about 30, so I'll make it a bit fatter. Now to do that, I will simply incorporate more fibres into my draft. So if I'm pinching right here at the tip of my drafting triangle, I'm going to be using fewer fibres. So if I'm pinching down here where it's a little bit uh, wider. So probably about there. Alright, that looks good to me. So I'll keep on spinning this thickness for a bit and then I will check apply back once I've done enough. I just need, yeah, I'm spinning yarn, a similar colour to my uh, background again. Let's, you can see it against a bit of paper a little bit better. There we go, maybe you can see what I'm doing slightly easier. Now, if I were doing a big project uh, that I wanted this thickness, 
about now I would uh, stop again, check my wraps per inch again and if it was the right thickness I would then wrap a little bit around a card so I can easily refer to my singles, what it looks like as a double ply back and what it will look like as a triple ply back, the final yarn. And I can keep referring to that as I go along. As it is, I'm not that fussed about consistent three through this whole project as it's only going to be quite small. So uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good. I can check again and uh, yeah, again maybe I'm drifting a little bit too fine. So uh, I have to keep an eye on that. One thing I can do to check is a ply back. Normally for a two ply you just fold it in half and uh, that would be your end result. For a three ply, you have to kind of make it into a N shape, like that, and then let all three of those plies twist back on each other at the same time. So that's my ply back. I can see I want a little bit more twist in there, so I'll turn the speed up. And this is the commercial yarn that's a similar weight that I'm comparing it to. So under tension, they look similar, and yeah, relaxed, they look pretty good. You can Maybe see mine's not quite as twisted, but uh, I'll remedy that by uh, popping up my speed just a little bit. And you can see uh, this bat is drafting really nice and smoothly. It's not got any uh, lumpy bits or uh, nips or bits of fabric or any fun stuff like that in. So uh, it's nice and light and airy. I'm getting a really nice smooth draw. Yeah, I thought I'd show you how my general spinning posture is uh, when I'm making these videos I tend to uh, try and zoom in as much as I can on my hands uh, and still have the spinner in a shot which means I end up uh, sitting far closer to the orifice than I otherwise would here. I'm pretty much as far away from it as I can get in a relaxed comfortable position with uh, a bit of paper on my lap as contrast so I can see the yarn I'm spinning and uh, very annoying cat. Um, the e-spinner is as far away as I can get it. This means if I have a little bit like there I have to uh, stop and do an extra bit of draft because uh, this silk's not behaving itself. Uh, I might have a little bit extra twist in that area so uh, having a nice long space between me and the orifice lets, lets me, uh, sorry, lets all that excess twist even itself out so uh, my yarn will turn out overall more even. You can get a similar effect by uh, rewinding your yarn onto storage bobbins from a lazy cape that's very far across the room, but I'm often too lazy to do that, so uh, this gives me a good happy medium. And of course this is a great reason that you might want to use the foot pedal as uh, then you can have your spin it even further away and not have to lean forward to stop it. Just uh, quickly tap it on and off. I have my Worsted Weights singles all spun on the bobbin um, but before I apply them I'm going to go even fatter so that I'm aiming for a 10 reps per inch final yarn. This time I'm going to try for 10 reps per inch singles. So each of my singles is going to be the same thickness as this whole yarn. Now I'm not used to spinning this fat and it's very easy to go off track. So I'm going to keep a bit of this and I will just wrap it around this bit of paper. So I've got it in front of me. And as I'm drafting, I will be drafting past it. If I had any tape in here, I would be taping that to the paper, but I don't, so I'll make sure that out. So again, I'm going to tear a strip off this bat. And my take-up might be okay. It might want uh, nudging up uh, a little bit. I will uh, have to check and see. This yarn is going to be fatter, but not a massive amount. I will definitely want my speed to be considerably lower though, as uh, I don't need anywhere near as much twist.
So I have the single spun for a worsted yarn and for a bulky yarn. Now I'm going to go for a super bulky. I'm not going to measure up per inch. I'm just going to see how fat I can manage. And we'll take the orifice reducer off. I shouldn't need to for the singles, but I will for the plying. So uh, again, the wheel settings shouldn't need changing too much. Maybe upping the take up a little bit. The main thing will be the speed wants to be really, really low. And it wants to be the right way. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to feed this bit past the orifice. I've got a tangle and the knot from the leader on the guide and then I'm going to up the tension a tiny bit right, have a little bit more speed Now I am ready to ply. I'm going to chain ply this uh, yarn. You probably won't be able to see that well. I do have another video on my channel of chain plying. So if you want to learn how to do it, you're probably better off watching that. But I'll try and talk you through what I'm doing. I have my bobbin right off over here to my right on a lazy coat and my spinner here to my left. I have it set to S, take up moderately high speed is down at zero. Um, I'm spinning the chunky yarn first as you can see so uh, I will not need a massive amount of twist in this. I'll be going really slowly. I have my singles tied to my leader and then I'm going to pull an extra loop through my leader like this. So I have a loop held open with two fingers and a strand in between it. And the motion I'll be making while I'm plying is uh, the same as making a crochet chain. I'll have this loop, I will grab using my forefinger the yarn through it, pull it out to make another loop. At the same time I'll be sliding my left hand down to pinch at this join here where the last loop came through. So all my twists will be up here behind this hand leaving this loop free to pull. Let's get it started. Alright, I'm going to need more take up than that. You can see I'm uh, getting a good ply here. It's nice and dirt thick, but it wasn't pulling on. slipping a bit but hopefully it will uh, be alright now when I start it again. Okay that's working but I've got way too much twist now, I did that too fast. So I'm going to let another loop through, slide my pinching fingers down and again. That level of twist is nice so let's one that on. You can even see it's uh, not twisting back on itself here in front of the orifice. So I mean it's close enough to being balanced. The uh, singles twist is still active so uh, if it's not kinking up that's a good sign. Alright, let's go nice and slowly. Put that on another loop, let the twist build. And here are my final results. See all three skeins together. 
over here. This first strand is my sample of commercial worsted weight yarn. This next one is the one that I spun. You can see it's slightly finer but not much, which is good because uh, once this has been wet finished it will fluff up a little bit so it will certainly be very close. And here is the one that was spun from singles the same weight as this finished yarn. So it's worked out as twice the wraps per inch, that's this skein. And here is the enormous, as fast, fat as I could manage uh, skein. And the uh, six coped with all of those really well. I didn't have to change the yarn guides or play with the tension too much at all. Just uh, small tweaks and everything worked out perfectly.